Hey guys, uh, in this video today we're going over the volume review packet and we are focusing on questions 41 through 50. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started with number 41 here. So it says the volume of a rectangular prism is 48 cubic centimeters. Which of the following could be the dimensions of the rectangular prism? Okay, so for this one, we know what the volume is. It's supposed to be 48 cubic centimeters. We're just solving for the dimensions. Um, and as you can see in your answer choices, the dimensions we're looking for are the length. We're also looking for the width, and then we are looking for the height as well. So we're just looking for, you know, what three numbers could you plug in here for L, W, and H in order to end up with a volume of 48 cubic centimeters. Uh, so we're still going to use our formula, V equals L times W times H. And really what we need to do here is just test out all four of these answer choices multiply the length, the width, and the height by each other and see if we can get a volume of 48 cubic centimeters. All right, so I'm going to erase that stuff. Okay, let's go ahead and test out our answer choices. All right, so I'm going to start with letter A here, and I am going to start with my formula. Please continue using that formula. The more you use it, I'm convinced the more likely you are to memorize it, and it'll just stick with you for a longer period of time. All right, so we've got V equals L times W times H. So now I'm just going to plug in the dimensions they gave me. So that's 4, 3, and 4. So now 4, or V, I'm sorry, V equals 4 times 3 times 4. And then we're just going to multiply and see what our volume is. Uh, so I'm going to start with 4 times 3. I know that that equals 12. And then I'm going to multiply 12 times 4, and that equals... 48. So it looks like the very first one we tried here does give us a volume of 48. Um, you know what I'm going to recommend, of course. I'm going to recommend that we test out all of our answer choices just so we are 100% sure that when we select letter A that we are um, choosing the correct answer and we didn't make like a, you know, careless multiplication error or something like that. Uh, so let's go ahead and test out letter B. So again, that's V equals L times W times H, and then we're going to plug in our dimensions once more, so that is 8, 6, and 2, so 8 times 6 times 2, uh, and then what I'm going to do here is first multiply 6 times 2, I know that that equals 12, and then when I do 12 times 8, uh, that gives me a volume of 96, and we're looking again for a volume of 48, so I know that B is not going to be the correct answer. Okay, uh, let's test out letter C. So again, using our formula, V equals L times W times H. And then plug in my dimensions once more. So that is uh, 12 times 3 times 12. So 12 times 3 times 12. Um, and then what I'm going to do for this one is, and remember, multiplication is commutative, so you don't have to multiply it the way that I am. I'm just trying to choose the first two numbers that I multiply carefully to make sure that I can take that product and multiply it by the last dimension in my head. So I'm trying to, you know, multiply the numbers in an order that allows me to computate it very uh, easily and do it mentally in my head. Um, so for C here, I think what I'm probably going to do is 12 times 12. We know that's 144, and then I'm going to multiply that by 3. And it's just very easy to do a, you know, three-digit number times a one-digit number. You could have done 12 times 3 first. That would have been 36. But then you would be doing, you know, the two-digit by a two-digit number. I mean, that just takes a little bit longer, so that's why I did it this way. Uh, so 144 times 3. 4 times 3 is 12. So 2 regroup of 1. 3 times 4 again is 12. 12 plus 1 is 13. 3, regroup on 1, and then 3 times 1 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. So, whew, yeah, we went way over our volume, right? That equals 432. Uh, so we know C is not going to be the correct answer. And then let's just go ahead and test out letter D while we're at it. So, again, V equals L times W times H. 
All right, let's go ahead and plug in our dimensions. So that's 20, 2, and 8. So that's 20 times 2 times 8. And then let's see. What I'll do for this one is I'm going to do 20 times 2 first. That gives me 40. And then to multiply that by 8, we know that's going to be 320 because 4 times 8 is 32. And then we're just going to add that zero in the ones place. That gives me a volume of 320. Uh, so just testing out all of my answer choices, multiplying the three dimensions that I was given, only one of them um, ends up giving us a volume of 48, and that is letter A. Uh, so for number 41, A here is going to be the correct answer. Uh, so, you know, those of you that are using those paper packets at home, you know, continue showing your work and working out all the problems, and I promise you'll be better for it at the very end for doing all of that. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and clear my screen here and move on to question number 42. All right, so for number 42, what is the volume of this figure? Uh, so what we see here is not just any type of rectangular prism. This is actually a composite rectangular prism. Um, so what you're going to do here is we are going to draw a line to make two different prisms, and then we're going to find the volume of prism A or prism 1, whatever you want to call it, find the volume of the other prism, and then we are going to um, add them together, and that'll give you your total volume for this figure. Okay, so you, you know, you've got a couple of different options here on how you want to draw your line. Uh, you could draw your line going straight down like this, um, and I'll switch colors here to show you the other way. You could also, if you wanted to, draw your line going across this way. Um, really, either way here, you know, you should still get the same answer. You know, somebody who, you know, draws a vertical line to make two prisms should still get the same answer. Sorry, y'all, that's my dog. Um, should still get the same answer as somebody who, you know, draws a line. Porky, hush, they don't want to hear you. Uh, they should still get the same answer as somebody who draws a horizontal line in order to get their answer. Okay, so for me, um, what I'm going to want to do here, I'm going to use uh, the vertical line. Um, that's just how I usually like to um, cut my composite figures when I'm doing problems like this one. Uh, so what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I'm going to start right here where you see my little pen. I'm going to draw a line going straight down. And in doing so, I just made two different um, rectangular prisms. So I've got prism A. Over here on the left, I've got prism B over here on the right. Uh, so one thing that you might notice here, we've talked about this a lot in class, when I drew this vertical line going straight down, you see that side length there of 9? Well, that 9-inch side length stretches from this point all the way horizontal across to this point right here. So that means that side length of 9 inches is covering prism A and prism B. I don't want to use right now that side length of 9 inches because if I calculate that as the length for side A and the length, or not side A, but the length for prism A and the length for prism B, then I'm going to be making my um, two rectangular prisms here overlap each other. And so what we're going to want to do is cross off that 9, okay? We don't want to forget that there's a 9 there, but we're crossing it off so that we don't accidentally use that 9 as the length or the width for prism A and prism B. Uh, so instead, what this means here is we're going to have a side length here for prism A, we're going to have a number there, and we're going to have a side length here for prism B. Again, we're going to have a number there, and these two side lengths, they need to add together to equal 9 inches. Uh, so right now, obviously, we don't have numbers in there, and we might not even need to put numbers in there. Uh, the only time that you would need to actually excuse me, put numbers in there is when we go to, you know, figure out our three dimensions for the two prisms and you realize, oh, I'm, I'm missing the length or I'm missing the width. And then you would want to start um, following some of those special steps that we've done in class in order to figure out, you know, what is that missing side length that they didn't give you. Um, so sometimes you have to do that and sometimes you don't have to do that. So um, let's just go ahead and start working our way through this problem and then we will cross that bridge whenever we come to it. Um, so I'm going to start here with prism A. I'm going to find the volume. Then I'm going to come over here 
find the volume of prism B, and then last but not least, I will add them together, and I will get my TV. I will get my total volume. All right, so I'm going to start with prism A, and I'm going to use my formula, V equals L times W times H. I wouldn't recommend using base times height here uh, just because I think that's making it a little bit harder on yourself. I would just stick with um, L times W times H. All right, so the hardest thing here is going to be finding your three dimensions. So remember, we want a line that goes horizontal side to side. We want a line that goes vertical up and down, but then we're also going to be looking for a sort of diagonal line that tells us how far back our prism goes, and we're going to um, consider that to be the width. All right, so for prism A, what is our length? Well, right here where there's a missing number, that would be our length. To figure out what the length is, remember, these are rectangular prisms. They're essentially just 3D rectangles. And we know that in rectangles, opposite sides are equal. So to figure out what our missing length is here, we're just going to look to the opposite side. And is there a dimension labeled? Yes, there is. It is the 4 right here. So you can go ahead and plug in the 4 right here, but you actually don't need to. That would just be something extra you could do to have everything clearly labeled for yourself. Uh, but we do have the length of this prism. It's this horizontal line going side to side. That tells you how long the prism is, and it is 4 inches long. Uh, do we have our width for prism A? Yep, it's this line right here. So our width is 2 inches. And then our height, of course, is going to be um, this line right here. It is 4 inches. So for prism A, you should be multiplying 4, 2, and then another 4 to get your volume for prism A. Uh, so we're going to do 4 times 2, which is 8, and then 8 times 4 is 32. So prism A has a volume of 32 inches cubed. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and do the same thing over here for letter B. I'm going to switch colors for letter B so it's just not so confusing for you. All right, so for letter B, again, we're going to use our formula. V equals L times W times H. Okay, and then again, trickiest thing here is just Pay very close attention to this composite figure. Make sure you're using the right numbers for your length, your width, and your height. That's probably the number one thing that people mess up on. So just take your time in doing it. All right, so let's look for the length. Uh, there's a missing side length right here. This would actually be the length of prism B. There's not a number here, of course, so we have a couple of different options. We know that this number which is the side length for A, and this number, the side length for B, they should add together to equal the total side length for A and B, which is 9. So we could just simply ask ourselves, 4 plus what number equals 9? And of course, that would be 5, because we know 4 plus 5 is 9. Uh, so that's one way that we could do it. Or we could just simply use what we know about some of our geometry attributes and know that in rectangles, opposite sides are equal. So to get a missing side length here, just look to the opposite side, and there is your number. It was already labeled for you. The length is 5. So as you can see, you know, it works out with this side length being 5 by using opposite sides are equal. And it also works out using, you know, um, an expression here to solve for the missing side length. Either way you do it, you're going to get 5. And that just further confirms that 5 is the correct side length for prism B. So we're going to plug in a 5 here for the L. And then the width, how far back does it go? It tells you right here. It tells you it is 2. And usually on composite figures, um, the width doesn't change for prism A and prism B. And as you can see here, that's true. In prism A, the width is 2. Prism B, the width is also 2. So just something there for you to remember. And then the height of prism B right here, it is 7. All right, so to figure out the volume of prism B, uh, let's do 5 times 2 first because that equals 10. And then we'll do 10 times 7, that equals 70. So prism B has a volume of 70 inches cubed. And now to solve for the total volume, we're going to add the volume of prism A and the volume of prism B to get our total volume. So that's going to be 32 plus 70 
or 70 plus 32, however you want to do it. It's addition. Addition is also commutative, and they're both two-digit numbers, so it really doesn't matter here which one you put on top. Uh, so 2 plus 0, that equals 2, and then 7 plus 3, that equals 10. So that gives us a total volume of 102 inches cubed. Uh, so this would be your final answer here for what number is this? Number 42, and D is the correct answer. Okay, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and wipe my screen clear here. All right, number 43, Anne-Marie built a design of the number symbol with blocks. So if you look at it, it's kind of laying on its back a little bit, but this is like a 3D like hashtag like this or like a tic-tac-toe board, however you're used to referring to it. That's like a tic-tac-toe board or a hashtag, but it's also the number symbol. So it's kind of laid down on its back some, um, but that is a three-dimensional um, number sign. And we want to know what is the volume of Anne-Marie's design. Uh, so for something like this, I would not recommend doing length times width times height, and I would definitely not recommend doing base times height. We basically know that the volume... It's just the number of uh, cubic units that you have. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to count the number of cubic units. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use colors to kind of color code the different blocks that I'm counting for you. And we just want to make sure we don't miss any cubes. And we want to make sure that we don't accidentally count any cubes twice. So you need to have some kind of system that you're using. Whether you're at home using like crayons and colored pencils and you're color coding them by the lines, like the vertical lines or the horizontal lines, or maybe you're just simply taking your pencil and you're putting a dot inside each box as you count it, I would recommend you have some kind of labeling system for a problem like this. Uh, so I'm going to use blue to count this uh, row right here that you see. So this is one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that gave me five. Notice how I didn't count this little section right here. That's because I counted the top of it. And when I count the top of the cube, I don't want to, again, count the side of the cube because it's the same cube. Uh, so if you count the top and the side, then you're counting the same cube twice, and we don't want to do that. So right here in blue, I have five cubes. Okay, now I'm going to use pink, and I'm going to count the number of cubes over here, and they should be equal to each other. Uh, so that's one, two, three, four, five. So again, I have five here, and again, I'm not counting this little section because I just counted the top of it. So I don't want to count the same cube twice. I think that was a mistake that some people made um, when we did this in class. All right, now I'm going to use green, and I'm going to count this uh, row here going side to side. So that's one. I'm going to skip over the blue. It's already been counted. Two. Skip over the pink. It's already been counted. And three. So that gives me three cubes right there. And I don't want to count this side right here. I don't want to count this front right here. I've already counted the top of the cube. So all you would be doing is you would be counting the outside faces of the cube. And we just want to count the cube one time by itself. Okay, and I'm going to use red, and I'm going to count my very last row right here. So this is one, skip blue, it's already been counted, two, skip pink, it's already been counted, and three, so that gives me three right there. So now I've, you know, labeled all my different cubes here, I just need to put them all together, I need to add them together. Uh, so five plus five, that is ten, three plus three, that is six. So when I add those together, 10 plus 6, that gives me 16. So I have 16 cubic units here all together. So D would be the correct answer for number 43. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next one. All right, number 44. Emily has three containers. Each container is 10 inches long, 10 inches wide, and 5 inches deep. What is the total volume of all three containers? Uh, so really the trickiest thing to this one is remembering you're solving for the volume of all three containers, and each container has these dimensions right here. Uh, so this is going to be a two-step problem. We need to find the volume of one of the containers, and then we can either add that container three times, or we can multiply that volume 
by three because remember we have three containers and all three just so happen to have the same volume all right so first thing we're going to do is figure out the volume of one container so that's v equals l times w times h and then we're going to plug in our dimensions here so it says that it is 10 inches long it says that it is 10 inches wide and then for the five inches deep, that must be the only dimension left, which is the height times five. All right, and then from here, uh, we know that, uh, let's see, either way you could do it. Let's see, 10 times 10, that gives you 100. 100 times five, that is 500. So this would give you, for the volume of just one container, that would be 500 inches cubed. So what you're not going to do is come over here and choose B as your answer. B says 500 cubic inches. That is for one container. Remember, she has three containers and we want to know what is the total volume for all three of those containers. So they tried to trick you by putting B as an answer choice. This right here, the 500, I can't stress that enough, that is for one container one container we have three containers uh, so what we can do now is take our 500 cubic inches and we can either do 500 plus 500 plus 500 because that would be adding 500 three times for the three containers or we can use our multiplication shortcut which is what i recommend you do and we'll do 500 which is the volume of one container times three because that's how many containers we have with that volume of 500. So we're going to multiply 500 times three. Three times zero is zero. Three times zero is zero. Three times five is 15. So this right here would be your total volume, 1,500. And of course, don't forget your units, uh, cubic inches or inches cubed. So for number 44, D is the correct answer. All right, moving on here, we're doing good. Number 45, a box is four feet tall, two feet wide, and has a volume of 40 cubic feet. What is the length of the box? Okay, so I hinted at this on our last video about how, um, you know, sometimes it'll give you the volume and you'll be solving for a missing dimension. Uh, so you've done problems like this before. So let's just kind of review how we're going to do that. First thing I would recommend you do is just go ahead and start with that formula. Sometimes even if we don't know what to do, if you can just write down the formula, then you can slowly kind of start to put the pieces together and realize what's going on here. All right, so just like always, we're going to plug in our letters here with the, the numbers that we were given. So we're used to not having the volume and just putting a V here. Well, for this problem, we actually do have the volume. It says right here, has a volume of 40 cubic feet. So I'm gonna plug in 40 for my volume, okay? So I'm gonna plug in 40 for my volume. Now, do we have L? Let's see, four feet tall, two feet wide. It says, what is the length? So we are actually solving for L. That means, no, we do not have L. So we're just going to put an L there. Times, do we have W? Yep, it says right here, two feet wide. So I'm going to plug in two for L. And then do we have the height? Yep, it says it is four feet tall. Well, how tall something is, is the height of something. It's like when you go to the doctor and they measure your height, they're trying to figure out how tall you are. So tall and height are the same thing. Uh, so now this leaves us with this right here. So actually, I don't need the word problem anymore. I have everything I need right here in this algebraic expression to go ahead and try to solve for the length. So we've got 40 equals L times two, times four. Now, one strategy we've talked about in class is that if it confuses you to have the 40 equals on the left side of your equation, you can simply cross it off. You can move it over here to the right side where you're used to seeing it so that it looks like this. 
So now we have L times 2 times 4 equals 40. Uh, so that's always a strategy that you could use. I do recommend, though, that you get used to seeing the equal sign on the left of the expression, uh, just because you'll see that more and more in middle school and high school and, and stuff like that. Uh, but just know for right now, if it is confusing you, you can move it over here to the right side, and it's not going to change anything. It's not really going to make a difference. Um, I'm going to leave it over here on the left side just because that's the way I really like for it to be, and that's the way that we practiced it a lot in class. Okay, so 40 equals L times 2 times 4. All right, so what we need to do here is we need to go ahead and multiply the 2 times 4 so that we don't have two numbers over here next to the L. We just have one. So that would be 40 equals L times 2 times 4 is 8. So that's going to give me 40 equals L times 8, and now I can solve for this L right here. Uh, so remember, we've talked about this in some of the other videos. Multiplication and division, they are what we call inverse operations. That means they undo each other. So that means that this is a multiplication problem where I have the total, the total is 40, and I have one of my factors, this factor right here is 8, and I'm missing this factor right here, then I can use the opposite of multiplication, which is division, and I can solve for L. Because remember, factor times factor equals total. Well, I don't have both factors. I only have one of my factors, but I do have the total. So what I'm going to do here is take my total volume, which is 40. I'm going to do the inverse operation of multiplication which is division, so I'm going to divide that by 8, and that's going to tell me what L is equal to. Uh, so what is 40 divided by 8? Well, that is 5, so that means L must be equal to 5. This is my missing length right here. This is my missing side, so A would be the correct answer. Now, you're not 100% you're not sure that you did it right. That's okay. You can actually come over here, and you can check your answer. Because remember, V equals L times W times H. Well, now I think I know what the length is. I think I know that the length is 5. So now I can use this exact same formula, plug in my length of 5 and the other two dimensions I were given, 2 and 4, multiply them and see if I do get a total volume of 40 cubic feet. Uh, so let's go ahead and try that. So to check my answer here in green, V equals L times W times H, and I'm just checking my answer here. Um, so let's see, V equals, by doing all this work over here in blue, I have a length of 5 times my width was 2 times my height was 4. So if I multiply these three numbers and get 40, then 5 is the correct answer. So V equals, I know that 5 times 2 is 10, 10 times 2 is 40. That did give me a volume of 40, so 5 was the correct missing length all along. If I had plugged in any of these other numbers, 8, 46, 320, when I checked my answer over here, I wouldn't have gotten a volume of 40, which means I would have had the wrong length. Uh, but in this case, we do have the correct length. It is 5. All right, going to clear my screen. All right, number 46 here. So it says... Samantha built a rectangular prism. The prism had a length of 3, height of 3, width of 3. Okay, so that actually tells you, um, it's not actually a rectangular prism, is it? If it has a length of 3, a height of 3, and a width of 3, then this is actually a what? All the sides are the same. This is a cube. This is a cube. Uh, so it says, then Samantha doubled each measurement to create a new figure. What is the volume of the new figure? Uh, so for this one, make sure you know what doubled means. Double, that means to multiply by two. Uh, so before you even start plugging in your dimensions here, your length, your width, and your height to figure out the volume, make sure you double what the length is, double what the height is, double what the width is, and then you can find the volume of the new figure. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with our formula here. V equals L times W 
times H. There we go. All right, and we're solving for the volume. And I remember, like I said a second ago, we're doubling each measurement to create a new figure. We want the volume of the new figure. So I'm not actually going to plug in 3 for my length. I'm going to double 3. Well, 3 times 2 is 6. Same thing for my width. My width was also 3. 3 times 2 is 6. Same thing for my height. My height was 3. 3 times 2 is 6. So all I did here was go ahead and double each measurement using mental math because all we had to do was multiply these numbers here by 2. That gives me my new measurements, my new dimensions, and now I can multiply those numbers to find the volume of my new figure. All right, so 6 times 6 times 6. Well, 6 times 6 is 36. And then I'm going to multiply that by my last 6 here. So 36 times 6, that should give me my volume of the new figure. So again, 6 times 6 is 36. 6 regroup of 3. 6 times 3 is 18. 18 plus 3 is 21. And that gives me a volume of 216. And we were measuring in what units? Uh, centimeters. So 216 centimeters cubed. And C is the correct answer. 216 cubic centimeters. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. All right, number 47. So Josh created a rectangular prism using one cubic inch blocks. The prism is seven blocks tall. The base of the prism is shown below. What is the volume of the prism? So for this one, you had to read it just very carefully. They actually gave you all the information that you needed. You just had to read it very carefully. Uh, so for this one, they're telling us how tall the prism is. That is the height. And then you'll notice here, they also are showing you the base of the prism. So that tells you what formula you're going to want to use here. You're going to want to use volume equals base times height. And then again, we're just going to plug in our numbers here. So it says the base of the prism is shown. So this right here is the base of the prism. So to get the number that we're going to plug into our formula, we need to know basically how many cubes do you see here. So remember, base is essentially just doing length times width. So you could either do length times width here, or you could just count how many cubes you see. Since there's not that many of them, I'm just going to go ahead and count them. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, <clears throat> excuse me, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, so I have a base of 15. And then I can't see the height here in the figure, but that's okay. The word problem here tells me that the prism is seven blocks tall. So I'm going to plug in seven for my height. And then to get my volume of what this figure would be, uh, should it be completed here, I'm going to do 15 times 7. 15. And actually, I'm not even going to do the traditional algorithm. Here's what I'm going to do instead. Uh, so to do 15 times 7, I know that 15 times 6 is... Actually, no. You know what? I was thinking of 15 times 4. So I tell you what, we probably still could do that mentally. But I'll tell you what, let's just go ahead and do that with that traditional algorithm. I'm sorry, friends. My brain was going elsewhere on that one. Yeah, let's just go ahead and do 15 times 7 with the um, traditional algorithm. So 5 times 7 is 35. So we're going to do 5, regroup of 3. Uh, 7 times 1 is 7. 7 plus 3 is 10. So for number 47 here, that gives me a volume of 105. And we're using cubic inches. So 105 cubic inches or inches cubed. This one did use inches cubed. It just spelled out cubed instead of using an exponent of 3, which means the exact same thing. All right, so D would be the correct answer for that one. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and clear my screen here and move on to the next one. All right, number 48. A cracker company decreased the volume of its boxes. All right, so already we know this is probably going to be an important word. They decreased the volume. Decrease means to go down. It means to lessen the value of something. Typically, that means we're going to subtract. Not always, but usually it means we're going to subtract. 
it says the old box had a volume of 210 cubic inches. The dimensions of the new box are 8 inches by 10 inches by 2 inches. By how many cubic inches did the box volume decrease? Okay, so this is going to be a two-step problem. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I'm going to label what was the volume of the old box. So OB stands for old box. Its volume was 210 cubic inches. So I'm just going to put 210 here. Uh, so what we want to do now is we want to figure out what is the volume of the new box. Well, it would be too easy just to go ahead and tell you the volume of the new box. Instead, what they want you to do, they want you to use these three dimensions right here to figure out what is the volume of the new box. Uh, so for my new box, N, B, for new box, we're going to write what the volume is right here beside it. But first, I need to actually figure out what is the volume. So I'm going to go to my formula, V equals L times, there we go, W times H. And you'll notice they didn't tell you which number specifically is the length or which one's the width or which one's the height. And that's okay. Multiplication is commutative. So you can just multiply these numbers in order and you're still going to get the right volume. So I'm just going to plug them in in order, 8, 10, and 2. And then we're just going to multiply. So I know that 8 times 10 is 80. 80 times 2 would be 160. So the volume of my new box is 160. So now I have the volume here for both of my boxes, the old one and the new one. And we want to know by how many cubic inches did the box volume decrease? So we are going to have to subtract here. We're going to subtract the volume of the new box from the volume here of the old box. So that's 210 minus 160. Um, zero minus zero is zero. I can't do one minus six, but I'm going to look at this as 21 minus 16. 21 minus 16 is five. So the volume went down, the volume decreased by uh, 50 cubic inches. So D50 is the correct answer for number 48. All right, going to clear my screen here. We've got just a couple more. You guys are doing so good. A rectangular prism has a volume of 72 cubic feet. So here we go again. They gave me the volume. That must mean that I am missing one of my dimensions. Um, it says there is a height of 4 and a width of 3. What is the length in feet of the prism? So again, we are solving for the length here. So I'm going to use my handy dandy formula. V equals L times W times H. And then like always, I'm just going to go to the word problem. I'm going to plug in the numbers that I was given. So I was given the volume. The volume is 72. So I'm going to put a 72 here. Um, I was not given the length. That's what I'm solving for. So L. I was given the width. The width is right here. It's 3. And then the height is Four. Uh, so that's 72 equals L times 3 times 4. Uh, so remember, like I've said earlier, you can move the equal 72 over here to the right hand side if you'd like to. Um, but remember, in middle school and high school, you know, you're going to have to get used to seeing that equal sign on the left. That's a very common way of writing um, expressions like this. So it's better now if you can go ahead and just start getting um, yourself familiar with that. All right, so now what we're going to do is we need to simplify this expression a little bit. And all that means is I've got too much going on here. I need to simplify it just to make it look a little bit easier to understand. So that's going to give me 72 equals L times 12. Now, where did that 12 come from? It came from right here. It came from doing 3 times 4. 3 times 4 is the only thing that I simplified here in order to get that 12. Uh, but now that I've simplified here, it's going to be much easier for me to solve. So we know that multiplication and division, they are inverse operations. They undo each other. So if I have, you know, a missing factor, 
times a known factor to equal a product, then what I can do is do the inverse operation of multiplication. I can divide, and that's going to tell me what L is equal to. So I'm going to start with my total volume, which is the 72 here. 72. I'm going to do my inverse operation. I'm going to divide. Now, we don't want to divide by L because that's going to leave us with the same problem we have up here. We're going to divide by 12. And that will tell me what L is equal to. So 72 divided by 12, that just means 12 times what number is going to equal 72. Uh, well, think about your 12's multiplication facts. We know 12 times 5 is 60, right? It's 60. If I add 12 more to 60, then I end up with 72. So I only had to add 12 one more time. So that means to get 72, I would do 12 times 6. That would equal 72. So that must mean that 72 divided by 12 is equal to 6. So L is equal to 6, and we're measuring in feet. So it's equal to 6 feet. And this right here would be your final answer for question number 49. Uh, please make sure you do write your units of measurement on there because volume, it is measurement. So it's not just six, it is six feet. All right, guys, we've got one more here. There we go. All right, number 50. Okay, and you've probably seen this one before. I pulled this one from an old quiz that we did at the beginning of the school year. Uh, so it says each cube in the figure has a volume of one cubic unit what is the total volume of the figure? Uh, so for this one, I do not recommend using a formula. You certainly could if you wanted to, but I think it's easier here just to count the blocks that you were given. So I'm going to color code here. I'm going to count the first ones here in blue, and then I can see, like you see how this is an L right here? I'm going to count the first L here in blue. I can see that there's another L shape behind it, and I'll count that with a different color uh, just so you can kind of see what I'm doing. So right here, this is one cube. I'm not going to count this part right here or this part right here. That, that would be counting the same cube twice because <clears throat> All you're doing is counting a different side of the cube because you can see one cube from multiple different side views and then we don't want to count one cube more than one time. So I'm just going to count it one time. So that's one. This is two. This is three. This is four. This is five. This is six. And this is seven. So that takes care of the very first L shape that I see here. Now what I want to do is go behind it and I'm going to count the second L shape that I see. So this right here would be one. Okay. I'm not going to count this right here because that's just the top of the exact same cube and I don't want to count it twice. So this would be one. This would be two. This would be three. Now there is a hidden cube right here, okay? There's a hidden cube right here in this corner hiding behind this cube right here. That's how these three are stacked up so high. They're stacked up on a hidden cube that's right here underneath that third one that I just labeled and we can't see it. So that would actually be the fourth one. Then this right here, I can see the top of it is five. I can see the top of this one, six. And on this last one, I can see the top of it as well as the side of it, but I just want to count it one time. Uh, so the first L here in blue has seven cubes. The second L shape here right behind it also has seven cubes. So that's simply just adding seven plus seven, and that gives us 14. Uh, so the volume of this figure would be 14 cubic units. Oh, excuse me, I got the hiccups. There we go. All right, friends, so that's where we're going to stop with our volume review packet. I hope this has been really helpful to you guys, and just keep tuning into the videos, keep practicing those math skills, and y'all are just phenomenal. I couldn't ask for more dedicated students and parents, so thank you guys very much. I appreciate it, and let me know if you need anything. Until next time.